Hi, I'm Kim Winston Jackson with High Tech Sister, and today I'm going to be replacing the battery on my iRiver IHP 120. Last year I replaced the hard drive, I upgraded it to a larger one, but I left the battery in because it still had a bit of life left in it. But over the past few months, the battery life has been dwindling, and so now I only get a few hours from it. So I think that it's now the perfect time to replace it. So I have everything here that I need for the battery replacement. And we'll start with, I have the IHP 120. I have a Torx 5 or a T5 screwdriver, a pair of tweezers, a pry tool and some extra screw bits just in case I come upon a different type of screw other than the Torx 5, which I don't think I will, but I'm not for sure. I haven't taken this apart in a while. And of course I have the battery. So let's look at the back of the iRiver IHP 120. And as you can see here, the battery that is installed is the lithium polymer 3.7 volt, 1300 milliamp hour battery. And the battery that I'm going to be replacing it with is a Cameron Sino technology battery. I think that's how you pronounce it. And you can see here. This is a 3.7 volt battery also, but it has 2200 milliamp hours instead of just 1300. So I should get a considerably longer battery life from it, at least 20 hours, probably more. And just a note, I got this on eBay for about $12 and I got this particular model because it was recommended in some of the MP3 forums because in some of the batteries for this model that are sold aftermarket, the battery leads are reversed and on this model that is not supposed to be the case. The, they're supposed to be uh, in the proper polarity. So. That's why I chose this one. They have some other model batteries like a 1700 milliamp hour, but I just chose the larger capacity. The IHP has four Torx 5 screws in the end caps, and it has an end cap on each end, so that's four here. four here and also on the side it has a Torx 5 on the right side and a Torx 5 on the left side for a total of 10 Torx 5 screws. So let's start taking it apart. I have a Torx 5 but screwdriver is not the best one. I would advise you to get a better model than I have. It doesn't grip the screws very well, but it will work. So let's get started taking them out. Now I've removed all the T5 or Torx 5 screws from both end caps as you can see and also from the sides of the iRiver IHP 120. So now I'm gonna pull the end cap off the bottom and you can see right there and you can see it right there okay and now let's pull the end cap from the top so you can see it comes comes off just like the bottom you can see the headphone jack and so forth 
And now, okay, we just pull it apart from the side. You know, we have the hard drive and some shock absorption material when we pull it apart. As you can see, the hard drive is rather easy to replace because it's right here. But the battery is running underneath the motherboard. So, what I'm going to do is just take the shock protection off and it's going to be four torque four more torque screw screws here one two three four there torx five screws and I'm going to undo that and I guess pull the motherboard up and then I'm going to see if I can put the battery in from there. So it'll just, I guess, go in like, not for sure, I guess like this, <laughs> like this, I guess it'll go in like this. And so let's see. Let's recap what I've done since I've opened the case of the IHP 120. The first thing I've had to do is add another tool to my arsenal. One of the screws right here that I've taken out was stripped, so I couldn't get it out with the Torx 5. And also before I mentioned that there were one, two, three, see if you can, it's hard to see this one, and four screws to take out, but actually you need to remove the hard drive, which is easy, it just pulls out, you can put that to the side, and there are two more screws that you need to take out of the motherboard for a total of six Torx 5 screws so now also be careful here these are the speaker connections to the speaker right here on the side but we can just flip it over okay so I could do one of two things I could just like turn this back over and not going through all the trouble I went through. It took about 20 minutes to get this screw out right here with these pliers. But I could cut it, cut the wires here, and splice this battery in. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to turn it back here, right here is the battery connector. The reds right there on the left and the black lead is to the right. So you see it's a tough fit. This here is the power adapter right where the power adapter goes right here and this is the connection for the battery. So let's see. I don't want to rip anything. So see, can we get it out with the pliers? Just work it slowly, but surely. All right. So I'm back again after about 15 more minutes, and I finally got the battery connector out it was tough it's just snuggled between the power adapter which is soldered on and so it's a very tight fit i end up putting another bit on here this kind of like a 
pry tool bit and just pulling it out uh, and it came out so I can definitely see why some, why some people splice this because it just seems like it, that'll probably be easier but I didn't want to do that so now Okay, and we see the red goes to the left and the black goes to the right. So put that back. And now this is kind of affixed to the case with a adhesive. So we'll just pull, pull that up. like that and that's the old battery now just put this down I don't have any double-sided sticky tape so I don't know I'm gonna put some maybe electrical tape on here just some electrical tape Probably not the best solution, but I just need it pent down. So there we go. Now we got that pent down. And so now we have to get this in here. I'm hoping it will be easier to push it in easier to push it in than it was to pull it out what I've done now is that I have kind of used this screwdriver slash pry tool to angle the socket in between the power adapter I've kind of just pushed it in so it's not completely in yet but I should be able to push it in now yeah it's going in let's see I need to it's in I think that's in good enough. I think it's in all the way. Yeah. Now the adapter is in. It took considerably less time to put it in than to pull it out. So this is something that I don't want to do in the near future. So I'm glad I got a higher capacity battery. So I just need to angle it through here because I'm going to reroute the wiring just like before and also I need to clean the screen before I put it back in it has my fingerprints all over it okay so let's start putting it back together Okay, so that's the battery rerouted. Start putting the screws back in. The first one to go in are the ones that go underneath the hard drive. I'm not gonna screw these in super tight because they're super hard to get out.
can screw it down some more. Can also screw this one down some more. Okay. So I have everything kind of back in here. It's a tight, tight fit. As you can see, the, the mixture, everything over here is lined up. Because that's where I have my whole button and all of those buttons. Let's put the end caps on just to kind of keep it together. Okay, we got that end cap on, and it's not quite lined up. You see these right here aren't have to just kind of force it together see what we can do battery seem to be a little thicker than the old one and I don't think that would have been particularly a problem if I had the IHP um, 140 it's a little thicker than this one Okay, it's not on right because the whole switch isn't lining up. Okay, whole switch lining up on that side. Don't get it. Okay. All right, so we got it, everything in here just barely. Let's see before we, okay, I can take the hole off and let's see. It powers up. Cool. All right, so let's power it down. I think I do. I forget how to turn it on at all. Okay, there it goes. It's shutting down. So now I'm going to put the side screws in first this time. And boy, do I never want to take this thing apart anytime soon. And it's got the screw it in, but it's a really tight fit. In fact, I think I probably need a smaller battery or because this battery is real thin, that battery is much thicker. And oh, turning it back on again. I need the Turn it off and 
then put the hold on. So, I mean, everything's just like packed in here. I don't probably. I don't know if they have a slimmer battery or not. But I've got this one. I'm going to make it work. But it's just, you can just tell, like, if you look really hard here on the side, it could be more more uh, together. This is basically just packed in. I could take the I think I would have more room if I took the hard drive um, like shock absorption material out but I don't want to do that either so I'm just gonna put these eight screws back in. I screwed in the end cap screws on both ends. Also the side screws and you can see I don't know if you can see but I cracked it a little here. It's just that this is just plastic here and I don't know if you can see, but it's a little give here. It's like stretched to the max. It works, but ideally, like even over here, both sides, ideally this should be flush like this, but it's kind of bulging slightly. It's not a huge deal, but I will say that that battery was much thicker then this one right here and in this form factor you don't have any like room for extra so I think in the IHP 140 it probably would have fit better but again I have everything working and I keep it in a case anyway so that shouldn't be a big deal I keep it in a case like this, but I'm going to take it out so you can see the screen better. So what we do now is I'm going to take it off hold. And power it on. So... I think I go to settings here in the menu and general settings system I'm guessing battery capacity set for the default 1300 milliamp hours and we're gonna go all the way till we see 2200 milliamp hours and yeah so that's all we have to do and then I can go back 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 so now it's set with the proper battery life and not life but battery power how many milliamp hours it is and that's it it works but like i said you can't really tell too much oh you can see that little hairline crack i put in it because that's just a piece of plastic 
but you can see maybe here, maybe it could be a little more snug like that, but it's not. So that's not a big deal. I just finished installing the Cameron Sino Technologies battery with the 2200 milliamp hours. And it replaced this factory one. I think I like it. Um, it's a little bigger than this one. If you say this is a one, the Cameron Sino Technologies battery is a 1.5. So it's slightly thicker than this one. And you can't tell quite good here. But it bulges a little on the sides, just slightly. It's not a flush, flush fit like before. So I don't know if it's because of the battery by itself or the hard drive. I don't think the hard drive is any thicker. But with the hard drive in there, the hard drive shock absorption material plus the battery and the longer wire on the battery, it was a hard, hard fit. So maybe you can get the specs for this battery before you go and buy one to make sure you're getting a slimmer one or just replace it with another 1300 milliamp hour one but i'm glad i did replace it with this i did damage the the system slightly it's a crack right here but hairline fracture right there you can hardly see it but it's there but overall i got it together pretty okay a couple of the screws were hard to get out but i got it completed and it works i can power it on and all my files are there and the next thing i'm going to do is probably update rockbox because there's a update for it but as far as this is concerned it's working fine so until I decide to take something else apart, bye-bye.